On December 22, 2021, I published a controversial video to the 21 Studios YouTube channel of over 350,000 subscribers detailing a series of events surrounding former 21 convention speaker and author John Goldman, a.k.a. Jack Murphy. In this video, I comment on various newsworthy events surrounding the disturbing public and private conduct of John Goldman, as well as his speaking history with the 21 convention in 2018 and 2019. I denounce John's actions totally and absolutely, making it clear that he had no current association with 21 Studios or the 21 convention and had not in a very long time. Since the publication of this video on December 22nd, additional fact-based revelations have been made about the private conduct of John Goldman that were even more extreme and shocking than those covered in my initial video, denouncing him and declaring John a total embarrassment both to himself, the manosphere he was once a part of, and everyone around him. Amazingly, his public conduct in recent days matches the absurdity, hypocrisy, and depravity of his private conduct. Conduct which includes, but is not limited to, frequent self-initiated cuckolding, boasting about urinating on his now wife-to-be, and extensive heteroflexible for sale pornography on the publicly available website Chatterbait that featured anal stimulation of both oral and paraphernalia methods. This list is not exhaustive, and evidence of these activities is now widely available on social media in addition to being reported in the news. These are dark secrets John Goldman kept hidden from everyone over many years for his own personal gain. Upon review of the gross, aggressively hidden conduct by John Goldman and in consultation with top alumni 21 convention speakers, I've chosen to remove all 21 convention content of Jack Murphy from our platforms. This decision is permanent as John's choices in all these matters were abhorrently dishonest and beyond embarrassing to both our platforms, the Manosphere community itself, and other organizations he has associated with in politics, podcasting, and the media. While I'm traditionally reluctant to remove any public speaking content from our platforms, even from an exposed snake-like mega charlatan such as Jack Murphy, the disturbing nature of his past and present conduct outweighs any historical value these videos represent. We will maintain archived versions of this content for historical documentary type purposes, as well as any future lawful request by a court or law enforcement agency. On December 27, 2021, self-published author Linda McCloyd, a.k.a. Roman McClay, went on a killing spree in Colorado, shooting and murdering multiple individuals before being stopped and killed by local law enforcement. This officer was wounded during the fight, but is thankfully recovering. Her actions to carry out her duty under fire, defend herself, and stop a lunatic mass murderer were nothing short of heroic. This individual, Roman McClay, had been interviewed by several online personalities in recent years both within and outside of the Manosphere community in the promotion of his book series, Sanction. First and foremost, I support the public statement of author and 21 convention alumni speaker, Jack Donovan, on this issue. Like Mr. Donovan, I have never met this individual, Roman McClay. Our communication was limited. I have never read his book, and I have had zero contact from Roman in nearly two years. I do own a copy of his first book, and for approximately two years, it has been sitting at the bottom of the pile of over 70 books on my current reading list. This is common for me as a community and event organizer and being central to over 170 alumni speakers from those events. As reported by the news media and law enforcement agencies involved, it appears clear that this tragic and horrific incident was personally motivated against previously known individuals in his local community. In addition, it has been reported that Roman had a history of mental health issues that were on the radar of local and even federal law enforcement for some time, including investigations in 2020 and 2021 but without charges made. Furthermore, documentary filmmaker Mike Cernovich has reported that Roman was visited by the FBI in 2020 for making credible death threats and other criminal conduct. No arrests were made. If this reporting is accurate, then in the context of recent violent events, it seems there were serious errors of judgment by the FBI in this matter. To be absolutely clear, the recent actions of this violent lunatic do not in any way represent the Manosphere men's movement or the men and fathers in it. Our community is a place for authentic, positive, masculine self-improvement. This means men bettering themselves, their health and fitness, their relationships, their communities, and their families. The fundamental purpose of the Manosphere presented in my most recent State of the Manosphere address was explicitly a positive future for men, boys, and fathers. The Manosphere universally denounces violence across the board, outside of lawful and justified contexts such as personal defense from grave bodily injury, and heroic actions of our American founding fathers to defeat tyranny and create the greatest country on earth. In 2020, Roman McClay was considered for speaking at the 21 convention event later held in Orlando, Florida. 
As part of building a TED Talks for Men style event for over 15 years, we sometimes seek out promising new authors with little notoriety to give them a chance at larger exposure. Through the standard vetting process leading up to our event late that year, I rescinded Roman's invitation from our event. To be clear, Lyndon McLeod has never spoken at or attended the 21 convention or any 21 Studios event ever held. This was a decision I made personally as CEO of the 21 convention and 21 Studios based on Roman's conduct as a potential speaker. Roman was a relatively unknown speaker and my decision went largely unnoticed at the time. I extend my personal condolences to the victims, law enforcement officers involved and surviving family members. This was a tragedy for the local community and in some respects, a tragedy for America. These people deserve absolute peace, privacy and respect for their pain right now. It has more recently come to my attention that Roman McClay was a one-time member of the Liminal Order men's group founded and operated by John Goldman, AKA Jack Murphy. Given the totality of John's dishonest by omission and deviant behavior, it comes as little surprise to me that on December 20th, he projected and unknowingly prophesized the actions of former Liminal Order member Roman McClay by declaring that the Manosphere are school shooters waiting to happen on his public Twitter account. In my judgment, this accusation was then and remains entirely false, malicious, sensational, and slanderous. It reflects more closely on Jack Murphy and former Liminal Order member Roman McClay than the Manosphere and the YouTube rage merchants he also directed this comment at. I view his words in that tweet as a pathetic attempt at deflection of negative attention towards himself and his cult-like organization, Liminal Order, before the shooting took place. The tweet was delusional, and those were the words of a weak, desperate man burning down his own career built on a mountain of deception. In my judgment, this was his own psychological projection of those he surrounds himself with, and it echoes in the larger chamber of Jack Murphy publicly attacking and throwing the Manosphere under the bus for several years for his own personal gain and notoriety. It was fake political virtue signaling of the most disgusting kind. On December 29th, 2021, video blogger George Miller, aka Rolla Tomasi, known widely as the fraud father of the Manosphere, live streamed to his YouTube channel a series of extremely vile comments surrounding the mass murderer, Lyndon McLeod. He was joined by sycophant and fellow blogger, Ryan Stone during this broadcast. The original title for this video was Roman McClay was a 21 convention speaker, a statement he also made in several tweets related to this video by George Miller himself. Due to both the title, associated tweets, and over two hours of video content, I personally regard this video broadcast as an overt, aggressive, malicious, cancel culture style campaign to mislead the public and hyperlink Roman McClay to the 21 convention as a speaker. This is absolutely false as this apparent mass murderer, Linda McCloyd, for a matter of fact, has never spoken at or attended any 21 Studios live event. It was uninvited from the one convention he was temporarily invited to years before the recent tragedy in Colorado. George Miller was sent a cease and desist notice for, with a demand for immediate retraction and apology on this issue. Thus far, he has updated the title with a question mark at the end, and what I imagine is an attempt to evade liability for potential defamation or other legal matters. His statements on Twitter remain intact, falsely promoting Roman McClay as a 21 convention speaker to thousands of people. I've asked our attorney to investigate these issues for the potential of defamation and false light against the 21 convention and myself, as these statements were in my opinion made with a reckless disregard at best for the truth. To my knowledge, no sincere attempt was made to verify the truth of Roman McClay in this context, something any journalist with an ounce of common sense would reasonably do. Regarding my deleted tweets that Roman McClay had publicly responded to on his Twitter account and that George Miller has publicly assessed over, these tweets of mine were deleted in January of 2021 by me, along with all of my personal tweets since 2009, over 35,000 tweets in total. I chose to delete all of my tweets in protest when nearly one year ago today, the sitting president of the United States, Donald Trump, was banned from Twitter and nearly the entire internet. I was as disgusted then as I am now with big tech and the Orwellian anti-American monopoly-like control over free expression on the internet and our public square. In my judgment, these American companies are run by extremists who are radically out of line with common sense American values like free speech. Furthermore, I support this statement by popular rapper, author, and podcaster Zuby made here on this guilt by association issue. Specifically, screw anybody trying to implicate me in this. George Miller and his business associate, Mr. Stone, went significantly further in Miller's video broadcast, 
With the body still warm, the victims of the family still mourning, and at least one police officer still recovering from life-threatening injuries sustained in stopping a mass murderer, these two imbeciles went on a two-hour tirade, gloating, giggling, and laughing over this incident. Mr. Miller describing it as a Christmas present multiple times during the live stream in reference to his unending hatred and obsession with me personally, as well as the 21 convention and several of our alumni speakers named during the broadcast. This class of ugly, repugnant, ghoulish behavior can be found in abundance throughout the two hour video. While I have long regarded Rolla Tomasi as a total fraud, opportunistic con man who preys on the souls of hurt, wounded men, this is a new low I never thought possible even for him. After he docks the location of over 50 men in October 2018 to a feminist reporter at the New York Times and tried covering it up for eight months, I thought I had seen the worst of the fraud father. The two-faced betrayal that endangered the very men he publicly proclaimed to help that resulted in the immediate removal of Mr. Miller from the 21 convention and all associated pro professional relationships. Several experts in psychology have told me in private for years that they believe Rolo Tomasi is a narcissistic psychopath in the literal non-derogatory sense. After watching him rant, rave, and project nonstop for over two hours in this video about pathological personalities, I can say without a doubt that I believe this is an accurate assessment of George Miller. Right after a mass murder at a time of national tragedy and however distant a dark moment for the manosphere itself, his unhinged, tone-deaf comments were a bottomless pit of zero empathy and moral insanity, hallmark traits of psychopathy. He owes an immediate apology not only to everyone attacked in the video, but to the families of the dead. Both he and Mr. Stone should delete their entire presence off the internet for this atrocity of commentary. There is no amount of stupidity, arrogance, or poor judgment that can explain this away. I also want to strongly support the comments of Pastor Michael Foster on this issue, that the statements on Mr. Miller's channel were evil, and that both Miller and his den of evil are merchants of misery. I will go a step further and declare them merchants of death due to their recent choices in relation to Roman McClay. George Miller in particular is a media hound who will stoop to harnessing a deadly tragedy for ad revenue and clicks, and if possible, even to extract personal vengeance on a former business partner. All the same can be said of Rolo Tomasi cheerleader, acolyte, and parrot, Edwin Alexander Hopkins, a.k.a. Donovan Sharp, who gleefully praised his commentary live and did a follow-up video himself echoing the same unhinged lunacy and degeneracy. In truth, the Manosphere has been locked in a civil war of sorts since mid-2019. This is a war between authentic, positive, masculine men who value honor, courage, fatherhood, and family versus a collection of sick, predatory frauds who hate men and make gold diggers look like angels in comparison. Since this time, we've been fighting tooth and nail to clean up the filth, fraud, misogyny, and anti-male misandry deeply embedded in this community by twisted charlatans posing as self-help, fake alpha male gurus. Our community was temporarily united in disgust with the disturbing revelations of Jack Murphy. And without hesitation, Mr. Miller and his nest of blood-sucking parasites swooped in to ruin this peace. It should be noted that Mr. Miller was initially happy to speak alongside Jack Murphy and give him his red pill stamp of approval before later turning on him. This behavior is common for Miller, who regularly denounces any disagreements with his cult-like ideology as blue pill and purple pill. In truth, nearly every speaker recommendation Roll Tomasi ever gave me for speakers in our former professional relationship has uniquely turned into a fraudulent disaster. Everything this psychopath touches turns to shit. Clearly, the fight to make the Manosphere great again is an ongoing battle. Recent events in totality have been absolutely tragic, unfortunate, and bizarre across several dimensions. Yet this remains a war that we will win by continuing to expose frauds with facts, evidence, and no mercy. Because if it can be destroyed by the truth, it deserves to be destroyed by the truth. Sincerely, Anthony Dream Johnson, first president of the Manosphere, founder of the 21 Convention.